So welcome, welcome everyone to today's ceremony for Suicide Prevention Month kickoff. Uh, this month, uh, the Army National Guard highlights efforts across the Army National Guard. And suicide prevention efforts take place every day. But this month specifically, the Army National Guard makes additional efforts to push resources to our families and soldiers and community members. As you know, this is a very important topic. It, it is something that has hit home here at, at our readiness center. <clears throat> it's something that hits home in our states and in our units. And it's something, uh, while it's been going on, probably as long as, as there's been an Army National Guard, uh, we've been particularly concerned about suicides and tracking it in detail uh, since 2009. Uh, I remember when I first came here as the deputy director, uh, we really started to gather our first bits of data. Everybody thought that uh, initially it had to be about mobilizations, it had to be about deployments. Uh, but what we really found, uh, it's just about society and, and community and, 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 and that we had to do something about it. It was in numbers which shocked us when we started to track it. Uh, 120 to 130 soldiers, Army National Guard soldiers uh, per year. Last year was a little bit better year. I think we had uh, uh, 77, uh, but we're already on track to break that number again this year. So it's, I think it's timely that we talk about this uh, so that we communicate it, and that's what's important about uh, uh, suicide prevention is, is discussing it, understanding it, and getting help and assistance uh, uh, where, where needed. But September is Suicide uh, Prevention Month. This one, and ones like it, will give you an opportunity to reflect on one of the most complex and challenging issues within our Army and indeed our nation faces each and every day. The theme for this year's Suicide Awareness Month is Take Action. That means everyone has a responsibility to improve personal resilience, to learn the warning signs and triggers of suicide, and to take action when necessary to support your fellow soldiers and co-workers when it appears someone is at risk uh, to, help, to harm themselves. First, as a soldier, we have a unique and special responsibility to our units and those we serve with, as well as to our nation. We fight for our brothers and our sisters, to our left and our right. We don't let our team down, we don't leave our team, and we don't leave anyone behind who falls. And we see the mission through. So I'd like to first ask that you take your personal mental health and resilience, and resilience seriously. These are not optional. Uh, our feel-good statements, I'm very serious about this. Uh, you know, personally, uh, had several uh, tragedies related to suicide in my career and in my life, uh, just most, re most recently in the last 30 days. Uh, and and I, I think, and I'm not going to ask you to put your hands, but I bet if I were to ask uh, this group how many of you had a suicide impact your life, that uh, I'd probably see quite a few hands uh, come up. Uh, you are all a valuable part of our team, to the organization, to the communities we serve, and to our nation. We need everyone in the fight. We need everyone to continue serving. I'll talk more about resources in a minute, but I want everyone to know that they must get help if they need it. Sometimes it's not easy. You might worry about being embarrassed when you ask for help, but don't be. Interventions which indicate whether soldiers are helping themselves and others are up, which indicates, quite honestly, uh, our soldiers and leaders are hearing our message at all levels and they are becoming involved. We had a 30% increase in interventions from 2013 to 2014, and our numbers are identical and improving for 2015. After ensuring your personal mental health, you must look at those that you serve with and those that are around you, uh, fellow soldiers, civilians, and family. We must challenge ourselves, not to become numb to the statistics or media reports, uh, but rather to maintain the personal connection with ourselves and others. And I will tell you, having looked at these numbers uh, for the last uh, five years, there's this tendency to just look at them as numbers. But each one of these numbers represents a life, a soldier, a family. Uh, and, and that's what we have to remember uh, as, as we, we go about our, our daily duties. And, and there's usually the signs are out there. They're, they're usually out there and we just shake them off as though they're just having a bad day. Uh, but if, if, if you see uh, the triggers, 
uh, you owe it to that soldier, family member, uh, to get them help. It's essential to know there are many resources in place to assist those who need help. The Guard Ready mobile application connects soldiers to healthcare professionals and resources within their local areas. We now have the resources available in all 54 states, territories, and the District of Columbia. Give an hour. A DOD-wide program connects at-risk soldiers to train cl clinicians who volunteer their professional time. Vets for Warriors provides free confidential outreach for soldiers from vets who have experienced hardships in life. These counselors are helping those in need navigate their, their, through their difficult time in waters. And many more of these programs are at the state and local level uh, provided outside of the resources we do because, as I said, this is a national issue. And so local communities and states are also doing all they can uh, to help combat uh, this illness. Today you will hear from Mrs. Kim Rocco who has done substantial work with the Tragedy Assistance Program for, so for Survivors, TAPS. She is one of the leading experts in postvention and has helped thousands of soldiers and their families who have lost loved ones. And as we talked earlier, she's helped uh, on two occasions here recently. So I want to thank you, Kim, for coming here today and sharing your experiences. Thank you.